everybody. Welcome to our fire building and safety video. My name's Arianne. I'm Marissa. We're both naturalists here at the Woodlands Nature Station and we are going to be covering some belt loop requirements for you on how to build a fire, how to stay safe around that fire, and then if you go to our next video, you'll learn how to cook around that fire too. All right, so first step of building a fire is if there is a fire pit, make sure you use it. This is a safety feature to make sure that embers don't spread while you are making the fire and that kind of thing. So if there is a fire ring, you should use that as your first priority. There are many ways to build a fire. Some examples are the A-frame, which we're going to demonstrate today, the log cabin, and the teepee. And you can kind of decide what works best for you, what you like best, um, and what you're best able to build. But we find that we like the A-frame best, so that's the one we're going to show you guys today. So the first step of building a fire is gathering the right wood. And we're going to go over a couple different kinds here. Now the first kind of wood that we're going to be talking about is tinder. Tinder is the small, tiny stuff that catches fire really quickly, like those dry leaves or these really tiny pieces of stick here. Anything that is smaller than your pinky finger, basically. Next up is kindling. Kindling is sticks that are bigger than your pinky finger, but most likely smaller than your wrist. This is what you'll put on the fire after the tinder gets caught by the flame. The final type of wood to gather is fuel. Fuel is the big stuff, most likely bigger than your wrist, those big logs. Those are going to burn for a long time. We're going to put those on our fire after it's already got going. But remember, you need good amounts of all these types of wood in order to keep your fire running at the, at the best you can. Now that we have all of our wood gathered for the fire, it's time to build it. And we are making the A frame today. So that means literally we're going to make the letter A. Step one is to make the base like this. You want to take two pieces of fuel or large kindling and make the base of your A with the point in the direction the wind is coming from. Next step is to take kindling and make the crossbar of the A. And finally, you're going to take tinder and pile it up against that crossbar like you see here. Okay, so there are a few ways to start a fire. One, of course, is with your usual matches and whatnot, but one of your requirements is that you have to learn how to make fire without matches. So there's a couple different ways that we're going to show you. Uh, so this first one is called a hand drill. You may have seen this also as a bow drill. There's an extra piece that uh, can go up on the top here and help you spin this, this, uh, this stick even faster. But how it works is you usually have a certain type of stick, like this guy right here, uh, with, that has a a nice small end to it and usually they, they like it to be pretty pithy uh, that helps with uh, creating the coal you can see it's already a little charred up in there uh, and then you have your fire board and you can see there's already holes started uh, for us to start doing our hand drilling on and then what will happen is is the end of this stick will end up like this and you start like I'm going to show you, you're going to turn your hand back and forth, back and forth, and get the stick really going. What that's going to ha what's going to happen is that's going to heat up the wood and turn it into a hot coal. And then once that happens, you st you uh, pop it out onto your maybe tin foil or something to catch it onto, and then you can use that coal to start a fire. And so we're going to get started, but this might take a while. too long. All right, let's try the next method. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to try is a magnesium fire starter. So this is also without matches, um, and it contains two pieces. So this is a little metal piece with kind of this ridgy comb-like. It's pretty kind of sharp. Um, and then this is your fire starter slash magnesium strip. So this side is the magnesium. You can see where it's shiny. So what I'm going to do in just a minute is I'm going to use this little serrated part and I'm going to scrape off some magnesium into a little pile where I want to light the fire. Then on this other side I have the strip that I'm going to strike to hopefully create a spark 
Um, the spark will go onto the magnesium, which is highly flammable, and then hopefully we'll get a little fire going and we can start the fire that way. So I am gonna go ahead and try that now. So first I'm gonna make my little magnesium pile. Okay, so I've got a little nice pile of magnesium on a leaf in here. So now I'm gonna strike the strip, see if I can get a little spark. I might try and get a bigger pile. Sure. There went my pile. So I have smoke, but not fire quite yet. And I think I burned up my magnesium. Aria, this is taking too long. <laughs> so, these two ways are amazing, especially if you don't have matches or flamethrowers. But thankfully, we are prepared to do some campfire cooking. We knew we were gonna go camping. We knew we were gonna need to start a fire. So these magnesium starters and the hand drill are great for like survival or if you really just wanna practice and get really good at them. But since we brought a flamethrower, we're gonna use that. Yeah. So how A-frame fires work, I shoved some really nice flammable dry leaves under here. That'll make a great little fire starter. You can also do fire starting with pine cones. Those are a great one. There's also, you can make your own with cardboard egg cartons and melted crayons or candle wax and dryer lint. There's all sorts of different ways to start a fire starter, but the big thing is you just want something really crumbly, really dry, that's gonna catch fire really quickly and then hopefully Hopefully get this tinder started as well. Now once that gets started, it's all hands on deck because you've got to start building on top of it. So you'll see we're going to get it going. I've got the flamethrower. We're setting fire to a couple different things here. we got some smoke, but nothing's taken yet. It is a windy day today. So this might take a few minutes. The big thing with fire building is patience because Sometimes the, the wood might be a little wet or it's just not catching quite right. The wind's blowing it out and you really just gotta keep trying at it till you finally get some flames. And then the one thing fire always needs is oxygen. So sometimes you can blow on it really gently to get the coals sort of fired up or maybe get a paper plate and sort of wave the fire but you don't want to do too much because you might put it out at this point. It's very delicate. You'll see I'm still burning stuff, still trying to get things going. There we are. Now your tinder is going to burn up fast, so make sure you have a nice big pile of tinder and really small kindling in order to keep building this fire and help it get bigger. Remember, as you build a fire, you need to start small to get things started. We're never, we're never going to get this one piece started right away. Uh, we always start with the small, tiny tinder and work your way up to the kindling, and then finally, once this fire is nice and strong, we will make it, uh, we might use a piece of fuel to keep the fire going. Remember also you don't want to put too much on the fire too quick. It's a balance. You got to be patient because otherwise you'll just smother it. And as always, watch your hands. Hey, fire! And then since the wind is blowing this direction, the wind is actually getting underneath our A here and fueling the coals underneath. That way it will continue to uh, build that fire. One big myth is that you have to have a big fire to stay warm or to cook on. That's actually not the case. Really, arguably, this is about as big as our fire needs to be. Now, if you've got a bigger fire pit and a lot more people, it's okay to make a bigger fire like a bonfire, but really, this is all you're gonna need in order to stay warm, and you keep building it about this size, build up those coals, and eventually you'll have a good cooking fire too. Because this fire is not ready for cooking. There's a lot of flames, but not a lot of coals. You wanna cook with coals, which are the nice hot red stuff that happens underneath. 
here's just a real quick example of what a proper cooking fire is going to look like. You don't want a lot of flames, just a lot of ash and coal for cooking. All right, so don't start a fire without water. Water is a very important safety feature in order to keep the fire in check, to keep you safe, all that fun stuff. So do have two water buckets, one on either side of the fire. That way, no matter where somebody is on the fire, if you need water, you've got one within reach. Don't run or horseplay around the fire. Fire is very dangerous and you can hurt yourself. Ariane, let's play tag. No, I don't think that's a good idea, Marissa. Instead, why don't we sit around the fire and we'll play tag maybe over in a field over here far away from the fire. Fine. <laughs> don't hang around a fire with long hair that might get caught up in it. Instead, make sure you are always doing this and do tie your hair back. But don't leave things too close to the fire. Do keep them 15 feet away for safety. Don't, oh no, I have to be somewhere. Eh, it'll be fine. Do stay with your fire at all times. Until it is cold, it is not safe to leave unattended. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to put a fire out safely. Now you can see we're done cooking, we're done with our fire, but we don't want to make this ring so soggy that if I'm camping out, I can't use it again, say tomorrow or for the next group that comes along. So we're gonna do a couple different things to make sure not only do we not make it too soggy for the next people, but also it's safe for us. Because if we dump water on this right now, it's gonna send ash everywhere, it's gonna sizzle, it's gonna smoke, and it's gonna be real dramatic, but it's not actually gonna put the fire out and there will still be uneven hot spots all over. So the first step, uh, Marissa, could you spread out the coals for me? Make sure everything's nice and spread out. <laughs> Find our poking stick. Here we go. So the first step is get all those big pieces that are less spread out from each other. That way they don't accidentally, you know, keep each other warm and kind of stir around all those coals because that ground is going to be really, really warm as well. Excellent. Next step is we're going to start sprinkling water onto these different parts. So of course we're going to put it on the big hot logs here. You can see those sizzling. But also the middle here that has nothing but ash. You can see how much ash is already uh, already popping up. We got to be real careful not to get that in our eyes and breathe it in. We're going to just start sprinkling it on. That way we can start bringing the temperature down. And we're going to keep doing this. And after everything seems nice and, and wet, we're going to stir it around and we're going to start over again. And the reason why we do this is because we do not want any hot spots. If, the, if it is still too hot to touch in there, it is still too hot to leave unattended and it could still fire. These hot logs can actually smolder for a really, really long time. Um, so we want to make sure that they get completely cooled down before we leave our fire. For the, for the night or for the day or however we're planning our day. You may have to get more water for this. Um, the big important part is just to make sure you stay absolutely vigilant. Make sure that it is, you know, it might still smoke a little, but you wanna make sure that this fire is completely out and not even sizzling when you toss water on it anymore. I'm also gonna sprinkle water around the outside edges because even though the fire wasn't there, it still heated up this whole area. And then, if you're pretty sure, especially if it's your own fire fire pit at home, that kind of thing, if you're pretty sure nobody else is going to be coming around for a while, it's not like a campsite, that kind of thing, you can actually take what's left of your bucket and just gently dump it over top. Thank you. 
All right, friends, hopefully you've learned a thing or two about fire, building fire, being safe around the fire, and don't forget to check out our next video where we're gonna be cooking with this fire. See you later.